you doing folks? Very excited today because I've got my hands on a grain mill. Now this is going to be a bit of a follow up. You might remember way back in 2015 when I put together a grain mill from a pasta roller. Now that worked. The rollers though were hollow uh, and they weren't really up to the heavy work that I was going to put the roller through, uh, the mill through. And somewhere in between me commercially brewing beer, buying crushed grain, and now I think I might have sent it to the scrap man, I'm not sure. So I've decided that I'm going to invest and make the purchase. And I ordered the three roller grain mill. It's actually from, uh, from the malt miller. It's the Keg King grain mill. I think it's from, the, from uh, Australia. Let's have a look. I'll show you some of the bits on the front here. Kegking.com. Let's just bring the camera over and I'll show you what we've got. So the malt muncher. 7421. Mill speed 200 RPM, maximum 500. Rollers, chromium molly. 15 centimeter, 6 inch. We've got the nail, hardened brushing, steel ball bearings, kegking.com. But this particular model actually came from the malt miller and I'm really quite impressed with the quality these rollers are absolutely solid and heavy there's a lot of weight in this so I ain't gonna stand here and hand crank this all day it's not happening so we're gonna build a milling table and probably extend this hopper yeah so it's absolutely freezing in here today but I'm gonna proceed to turn this uh, malt mill into something that can really handle, you know, 50, uh, 25 kilogram sacks in a pinch. So what we're gonna do is extend the hopper somewhat to fit in 25 kilos at a time, and then we'll make a base for a motor to go on to drive it, get rid of this crank handle, and uh, then obviously some type of collection system underneath which you can collect in either 25 kilo sack or homebrew buckets so first things that we need to do is scrounge some timber now the flats next door to the brewery are being renovated chaps just moved out in the interim the landlord is gutting the place so there's some spare Worktops, tabletops, kitchen units if you like going and we'll go outside and have a rummage see what's there, what we can't lay our hands on. So this is a lot of the jazz that's been removed and these I think what we will be looking for Something like this, maybe without that on it now. That looks like a nice prime candidate. I think we're on to a winner. This is the underside, doesn't look in too bad nick. So we'll just zip off these little bits of hardware that have been left behind. Just cut uh, this piece of workshop down. 500 by 800. If you cut them upside down as well, then you don't chip off the melamine isn't it? It's not the uh, cleanest piece of worktop in the world, but you know, it's second hand. We're using it to uh, crush grain on. But what's the problem? It'll do. Well, if I pop it there, it gives us plenty of room to mount a motor and plenty of room to play around on this side with pulleys. In fact, it would be better if we have the pulleys and whatnot on the rough side, on the cut side. So if we mount it something like that, plenty of room for a motor, probably like a one horse power. 0.5 horsepower, not even that for this. A quarter of an horsepower, half an horsepower motor. Driving two pulleys. Driving 
this. But at the minute, I think I'm going to take this handle off and we will power it with the cordless drill. upside down and by a sheer stroke of luck I've got four stainless steel M6 bolts and they fit into the holes at the bottom four holes mount the whole thing Before I proceed, I want to make sure that obviously it mills grain. So what I've got here is the edge of my workbench. I'm just going to get one of these quick clamps. I will clamp it on. I'll probably clamp some type of grain bag underneath as well. Or maybe just a bucket actually. And we'll run some grain through and see if she's actually doing what she's designed to do. Oosh. Right here I've got a sack of wheat malt. I'd say that's a pretty full hopper. Right, we're going handheld. Try a bit faster. Yeah, it needs a bit more torque. So let's check the crush so far. That seems a little fine to me. So I might just want to change that. Now to change the spacing between the rollers. It's these wing nut things here. And you loosen that off. That's opened them up a little bit. And the same on the other side. And that should be a different different distance. Right, we've got a fresh battery in the drill. with that mill. Uh, all of the malts gone back in the sack. So what I'm going to just do now is have a look underneath at exactly how the rollers stood up to the milling. And have a look what's left in. And there's not a lot. So there you can see very little overspill, very little flour left behind. Just a little bit here, which has banged off the top as well. And I think you could make bread out of that. But all the husk obviously is in there with the wheat kernels, so probably it would make sense for uh, if you're crushing barley. It probably makes sense if you're crushing barley to sort of 
have a look at the, the set of the rollers and maybe maybe open them up a little bit. I don't have any whole wheat barley at the minute though. Uh, everything I've got is crushed because I've only got some small batches because I'm only brewing small batches at the minute. So we'll trial it when we actually get some whole grain malt which is I think what I'm going to order next time around. Mm -hmm.